Whenever you're ready, Dee. Good morning. My name is Dion Warner, and I am a seven-time cancer survivor. And I say that with a smile on my face because I'm here today to share my journey of hope with all of you. My journey begins in 1995 when I was just about to get married and was diagnosed with breast cancer. I thought I was too young. This can't be happening to me. Why me? Then why not me? The first doctor told me that I went to see, that it was nothing to worry about. This lump was nothing at all. My family asked me to get a second opinion, and I did. It was the second doctor who told me it was something to worry about, and we needed to address it right away. November 10th, my life would forever change, as I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Telling my family and friends was very difficult, but they rallied around me and my husband and believed that I could get through this. I was not alone. My hair at the time was long, dark, and curly. It was devastating to me. As a new bride, I lost my hair. I lost my eyelashes, I lost my eyebrows, but I never lost my smile and my fight. And that was what was important and what I needed at that moment. After successful surgery and one year off from work, I reevaluated my life. And when I returned to work with my new wig in place, I had a whole new outlook on life and what was important to me. The summer was now June 1997 and I was at a friend's wedding, had a great time, when the next day on the phone with a friend I had a seizure, something I had never experienced before. On June 30th, 1997, I was diagnosed with brain cancer. Who knew? Happy one day, sick the next. Another challenge I was ready for. Bring it on. It took two surgeries to remove the tumor. I was off again for a year, once again reevaluating my life and counting my blessings all the way. At the end of year 2000, many changes occurred in my life. A divorce, and then an engagement to a man I've known for over 25 years as friends, who thought, let's take it to another level. What have we got to lose? His name is Graham. I was now living in Regina for three months and we were planning our wedding when I was not feeling very well one evening. Graham rushed me to emergency. Two days later, I was diagnosed with liver cancer. I told Graham he didn't have to marry me. I would go back to Ontario to be with my family and friends and the doctors who knew my case history. Graham took my hand that evening and said, you never leave your wingman. I knew at that moment Regina was my home, I was not alone, and that together Graham and I would get through this. On May 28, 2001, the tumor was successfully removed. I knew I would lose my hair for the second time, so I decided to have a shaving party. My girlfriend shaved my head. Graham volunteered to shave his, and I took one look at that pretty head of his and said, Honey, I know my hair will grow back, but I don't know yours well. We laughed and giggled and drank lots of wine that night. 
On August 27th, six months later, I was once again diagnosed with liver cancer. We were shocked. I was feeling great. I had gone through treatment. But bring on the next challenge. I'm a fighter through and through. Graham and I were given the opportunity to marry before I had my surgery. And that was the best gift anyone could have given me. When we returned home from our wedding, we headed straight up to Saskatoon. And once again, a successful surgery. The liver cancer was removed. Life was good for seven years. I was happy, our marriage was great, I had met amazing friends living in Saskatchewan. Went to have a CT scan and was called by the doctor the next day to come in right away. I knew it wasn't good news. I was ready. Graham and I marched in there. We sat down. He looked at us and said, Dion, you have four stage cancer, palliative. You have bone cancer in your spine, <coughs> pelvic area, ribs. You have lung cancer. And I know you've never smoked a day in your life. And you have the return of your liver cancer. A hush came over the room. I then said, what can we do? Can we rip any of this out? He said, no, it's spread too far and wide. I said, okay, I'm ready. You're gonna tell me what I need to do to get better. Whatever it takes, no pain, no gain. That's why I lived at that moment. I started chemo one week after my diagnosis. They had to get me in quick as possible. Graham and I decided that we were going to take the high road on this journey. I dressed up in my Cancer Sucks pink t-shirt and I put warrior paint all over my face. I was ready for the battle and as Charlie Sheen, Sheen said, I was in it to win it. <laughs> <laughs> Patients looked at me, probably thought it was like cra crazy, crazy, who is this crazy woman? But after doing 78 themes, they knew who we were. And we heard that people wanted to arrange their chemo treatments on our days, just to see how, what we were coming up with. And patients who wanted to join us in our themes. We wanted to bring laughter to the chemo room. Graham and I believed that we did that. As a little boy saw us one day, while he was having treatment and said, this is the best day ever. I will never say this journey has been easy for me. It's always 24 hours, why me? After those 24 hours, why not me? And what am I going to do? I'm not gonna give up and I'm not gonna give in. And I'm gonna fight with every breath I have. The word survivor in the dictionary means one who perseveres through life's challenges and hardships misfortunes and tragedies. <clears throat> One who refuses to give up and give in. I know that girl. I know many men and women like that. They are my heroes. They are my inspiration. We have a reason to fight back. We all want to live. Today I stand in front of you at the age of 46, a 16 year breast cancer survivor, a 15 year brain cancer survivor, an 11 year liver cancer survivor, a 29 month bone cancer survivor, and a 29 month lung cancer survivor. Life is full of ups and downs. It's how we choose to deal with each one of these challenges. 
To quote a famous fighter, don't count the days, make the days count. I look at my glass, it is always half full. What's yours look like? Thank you. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Take a breath. Breath. Breathing is good. Mm. It's so cool. emotional for me, so it's my nice, story. Okay. It's a that's, that's, there's you got every right to be emotional. Let's do some emotional issue. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'm ready. Bring it. <laughs> you are such a tough lady. You're amazing. Okay, so let's uh, write. <laughs> you saw I almost said that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, all right. Okay, so this is a tough topic for you. Still. Okay? And yesterday you had the question you said to, me, to us. You put the question out there to us. Well, why do people almost cry? And the reason that we almost cry also, besides our filters and things like that, is that we can tell it's still a tough, tough subject for you. I want you to think about how you want to handle this in speaking. Because the fact is, is that, folks, this is something... You can sit down, Dion. You don't have to stay. Unless I, does anybody have any questions for Dion? No, because it's we're pretty straightforward to a story, so it's not like you know there's nothing we can contest. You know, it's not like, like, yeah. you can't really go. Crazy. I didn't make anything up. Well, <laughs> but feedback. So what yes. about feedback? Feedback. My observation is uh, feedback. Uh, maybe I, I don't know if it's possible, but maybe more fluent. At some point, because of the stuff with the date, it was. It sounds like a memo sometimes. Yes. There was it's a good. lot of pause and. And I don't know how you can control that part of your emotions, but if you can be more fluent, more like a story. Uh, Absolutely. No, the, it's too, what I wrote down was too staccato. It's uh -huh. And I'm not sure what the solution to that is. That, um, I, I noticed when you were doing your edit that you were crossing off lots of paragraphs and keeping little paragraphs in between. And I'm wondering if you did an actual sheet that didn't have those crossed off ones so that it, it has that flow because it might be your eyes are taking that extra second and a half to skim. I'm skipping that, I'm skipping that, and there I am there. And I'm wondering if that might be. It could be. I think technically there's got to be that. There's got to be the smoothness. And you took a bunch out because I asked you to, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to take some out. Because I want you to be able to do this in all kinds of forms. I want you to be able to do it long, short, whatever. Um, I... Your, your messaging changed. You gave us the answer, which is good, but of uh, hope. But your body language, your tone, it didn't match. So I was like, well, is she happy? Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. She, you were very incongruent. She, absolutely, she so, was very incongruent. Yeah, and something changed. I don't know what it was, but when you got to, um, when you found out about your, your bone cancer, your lung cancer, all of that, Something changed. I don't know what it was, and suddenly it became a message of hope. And your 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 tone, your body language, it matched what your first message was. So if you can figure out a way to sort of bring that, mm. the other thing I noticed was um, I don't think you. I mean, for this particular like the smaller thing, I don't know if you need to focus that much on dates. You can just say in the summer of two thousand and whatever, as opposed to yeah, June. Two years later. Yeah. Um, With a specific date. Yeah. yeah, if you're doing the longer one, I, I, I think that you could do more formulaic. Mm -hmm. But for this particular one, um, I think you can just... And maybe you can help you with cue cards with just, like you said, summer this year, summer that year, or whatever, but in cue cards, because if you need to look through the page, then it's sort of like a new conversation. It's, so it's, 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 it becomes yeah. the dud, the dud, the yeah. dud. That, and it really it was a big it was a big difference. Go ahead. Lisa. Okay. I missed the sick humor that you had yesterday. I did too. Oh, yeah. Because I, it was too dry for me. Um, I the humor didn't come through until you said about the theme, and I was like, okay, but well, what type of theme? It, this, when it, we all have our our luggage, and we get through it because of dark sick humor, whatever you call it. <laughs> And to put this wonderful 
story through, you must include that. Okay, depending on your audience, its pitch is going to be slightly different, but it it missed the ep- it, when you had the epileptic. That was such a good wow. I am glad I didn't have that dance on such and such. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's it's, it's the love of my life because that's so important. Um, I know from my own personal experience, I wish I was home and got through my without my parents, and then later on through my my. It was real first, so I had to be strong. So you have to have that sickness, that sick humor. And what I wasn't sure of, I like, I didn't know if you said.